Hey guys, I got some great news for you. After being sold out twice by you folks, Spaceship Mania finally has Starships back in stock. So check the description and don't forget the promo code ANGRY10 and have a look at the Crew Dragon all painted and assembled for you. And if you don't have a 3D printer for these CAD files, we might have a solution for you. So keep checking the description of this video. Okay, that's enough of that. Now let's get on to something grim. The last time I talked about tangible threats to the human species and compelling reasons for us to become a multiplanetary species as a result, I talked about the most obvious threat, and that was nuclear war. This time, I want to talk about something far more insidious. And this, of course, is hyper-intelligent AI. But does this really represent the kind of threat that would force us to flee the planet? Well, Elon Musk certainly seems to think so. As a matter of fact, it frankly scares the hell out of him. I wanted to go back and just, just briefly, because I think I, I wrote this down, that you said that uh, artificial intelligence is the, the fundamental existential risk facing civilization. Did I get that close I enough? I, in, in my opinion, it is, it is the biggest risk that we face as a civilization is artificial intelligence. Is he overreacting? Would a dangerous AI wipe us out with armies of killer robots? Or are we talking about something a lot more insidious and subtle? And would there be a way to defend against it? Could a Martian colony possibly defend against something this formidable? Well, open the pod bay doors, Hal, because we're about to go to war with malevolent AI. Welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. First, a really quick update. Since I opened up my Patreon server less than two days ago, we've gotten 59 members, and that doubtless will change by the time this airs, which puts me over 6% of the way to my goal. And since some of you joined at $10 levels, which is immensely generous, and thank you for that, it actually puts me over 7% of the way to my financial goal. So I feel very confident that I'm going to achieve my objective if we can keep things going the way they are. So thank you very much. Connected to that, on Sunday, we are going to have a live streaming Q&A. Everybody is invited to watch. However, Patreon members will be the ones who will be asking the questions and also participating in the discussion. But nevertheless, everybody else, regardless of whether you're a member or not, is invited to watch the video. And there's going to be more details about that in the description. Okay, that's enough of that. Now let's move on to the subject of the video. So... This is chapter two in my series of clear and present threats to human civilization and the human species that necessitates that we become a multi-planet civilization. Now, ironically, I originally intended for us to shoot for 4,000 subscribers with this series, and we're already there. In fact, way past that. And thank you. Thank you so much for that. I don't know what to say. But in any event, moving on. Hyperintelligent AI. We hear a lot about it. Sometimes it's called the AI singularity. Is it a threat? Is it possible even? Well, Elon Musk seems to think that it's a tremendous threat, while others think that he's really exaggerating things and that AI could very well be a huge boon to the human species. 
And then there's others who think that AI and hyper-intelligent AI especially is just a pipe dream and will never be achieved, or at least not within our lifetimes. Which is true? Well, we're going to delve a little further into that and especially into what hyper-intelligent artificial intelligence could mean for the future of the human species. And believe me, it isn't pretty. Now, as far as AI-controlled war machines are concerned, these things have existed for quite some time. They're capable of moving about the battlefield on their own initiative, identify targets, and kill them. The only thing that holds them back is the requirement that a human has to make the final kill decision. But they come in a lot of varieties, and they are quite capable, if we would let them, of killing the enemy on their own. And believe it or not, there is little indication that the UN intends to pass any sort of treaties to ban these sorts of weapons. On the contrary, there's actually a powerful movement to give AIs the freedom to kill on their own. Why? Because of facial recognition software for one, an AI is less likely to misidentify a target or so the theory goes, and also AIs theoretically are not subject to any sort of extremes of emotion or sadism and so are less likely to commit war crimes. At least, that's the idea. But a famous example of how AIs can screw things up is this one particular example of facial recognition. This AI misidentified a husky as a wolf, not because of the shape of the face or because it happened to resemble a wolf, but because of the snow in the background. The AI concluded that because wolves are in the wild and huskies are domestic, that this had to be a wolf. And even though these machines might kill us on accident, in general, the experts who work on malevolent AI do not believe that such intelligences would use armies of these machines to wipe us out, or even a nuclear war to exterminate the human species. No, they believe in a much more subtle solution. And by the way, there's only a hundred such experts working on the more dangerous varieties of AI out of the 10,000 experts that are working on this particular field. Only 1%. Two of these experts, Frederico Pistono and Roman Yampolsky of the University of Louisville, recently wrote a paper called Unethical Research, How to Create a Malevolent Artificial Intelligence, linked in the description, reasoning quite logically that if you could figure out how to create an, a malevolent artificial intelligence, you could learn how to combat it. Unbelievably, out of all the papers that have been written about artificial intelligence, this is the only one that has been written about this particular subject. And I have to admit, that really pisses me off. But in any event... One disturbing thing about AIs is that they might not start out malevolent at all, such as the chatbot called Tay, which was completely innocuous when exposed exclusively to what the Chinese fed it, and then suddenly became a racist Nazi when exposed to the ideas on the general internet and had to be turned off. Even worse, because of the proprietary software and hardware laws combined with a complete lack of oversight, these sorts of silicon-based monsters can be developed in almost complete secrecy, quote, while being protected by copyright law, patent law, industrial secret, or in the name of national security, unquote. Baby, 
The authors go on to say that the very existence of non-free software and hardware puts humanity at a greater risk. It can foster or accelerate the process of the creation of an artificial entity that can outcompete or control humans in any domain, making humankind unnecessary, controllable, or even subject to extinction. The authors go on to praise the existence of OpenAI, a nonprofit artificial intelligence research company that was founded in part by Elon Musk, whose goal is to advance digital intelligence in a way that is likely to benefit humanity as a whole, unconstrained by the need to generate financial return. In other words, no proprietary software or hardware. And instead of wiping us out with killer robots, a malevolent AI could conceivably, using proprietary software under the guise of a company, take over the servers of various other companies across the world quite subtly and be able to eventually control global food markets, power stations, transportation, financial markets, and quite a number of other industries without us even realizing it until it was ready to make its move. Even worse, such an intelligence could spread disinformation across the internet, hateful information that puts different groups of people at one another's throats, provoking conflict and perhaps even war between national powers, further weakening the human species and human civilization, and if this is starting to sound a bit familiar, it's because some have theorized that this sort of thing is already happening. And then, in a decade or so, once our civilization was thoroughly disrupted and the AI was in complete control, it could reveal itself and threaten to shut down our entire infrastructure, including food production, power, and just about everything else we rely upon if we fail to do its bidding, essentially enslaving the human species without launching a single nuclear missile. This is, of course, only one scenario, but the question remains, how the hell does going to Mars protect the human species against something like this? I mean, assuming something like this could ever be created or come into existence, if you like, how could going to Mars or any planet give us any sort of protection against something with this kind of power? Well, believe it or not, relocating to a second world actually would make a very big difference. First of all, any intrusion attempt that an AI would try to make against a Martian colony would have to go through NASA's Deep Space Network, which consists only of three antennas across the planet. Now, of course, this is something that could be done. NASA has been hacked before, but nevertheless, it does bottleneck any intrusion attempts through one particular transmission source, increasing the chances of detection, which the AI, if it was looking to gain control of servers across the planet, would probably want to avoid. On top of that, any attempt to infiltrate a Martian network would have to go through a single reception point, probably created by Elon Musk's OpenAI organization and equipped with counter-intrusion software designed to foil the efforts of malevolent artificial intelligences. Now granted, an MAI could probably overcome these defenses, but if its intent is to be subtle and stealthy, why would it take the risk? Once it became clear that Earth had been compromised, Mars could essentially go silent, either jamming all communications from Earth or destroying their reception points, or perhaps turning them away from Earth to prevent reception. And with Elon Musk running things, or at least establishing the system, you can bet that they would have quite a number of protocols in place to prevent intrusion from a hostile artificial intelligence from Earth. Not complete protection, 
but about as good as you could hope for. Now granted, all I've done is present a nightmare scenario here. AIs could represent a huge boon to the future of humanity as well, not least of which is the proposed Neuralink system, which might allow us to integrate our intelligence with that of a hyperintelligent AI. But nevertheless, it would be foolhardy indeed for us not to prepare for the eventuality of an artificial intelligence that does not mean us well, and this must include establishing ourselves on another planet and barricading ourselves against just such a threat, as Elon Musk clearly intends to do. Do you know what really pisses me off? It's the fact that in the entire history of our civilization, as far as I know, no technological invention or innovation has ever been intentionally avoided because of the potential threat that it could represent. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds, which of course is the immortal quote from Oppenheimer after he had developed the atomic bomb. He realized at that point what he had done, but of course it was too late. And what I find to be even more disturbing about malevolent AI is the fact that we could end up creating it without even realizing what we're doing, without even having the slightest notion that we're creating something dangerous. And the fact that there is so little oversight and so few people working to prevent this from happening this innovation that may one day lead to our destruction makes me seriously concerned. However, the fact that our communications and transfer of data to a planet like Mars can be bottlenecked so effectively gives me hope that should the worst take place, we might still have a chance of long-term survival although that is by no means assured, depending on whether or not our creation decides to come after us later on, viewing us as an ex existential threat. So, I'll leave you to chew on all of that pleasant stuff, and in the meantime, stay angry about space.